Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Now in today's video, we're going to be talking about the factory OEM folding tow mirrors, mainly the puddle lights that mount underneath. Now we're dealing with the years 2010 all the way up to 2017, and it includes all the Ram pickup trucks. I want to show you how to diagnose the puddle lights and how to remove and replace them. I've been getting a lot of emails lately on how to replace the puddle mirror on one of these folding trailer tow mirrors. And that's what this video is going to be covering. Now there's something you need to pay attention to. Physically it's not going to make any difference as far as how to replace it, but in appearance it will. Now the puddle mirror on this assembly, which I've got taken off of a truck, is right here on the bottom side. Now depending on the year of your truck, your puddle mirror may look like this or it may resemble this right here. Now this is an older version. The older version was gray, had a clear cover over it, and had two LEDs. The updated, revised, and newer version is this black plastic piece that matches the housing, one LED with a smaller lens. When you go to order this, this is what you're going to be getting through Mopar. There's also a note about replacing this in pairs, mainly so that it matches the passenger side and the driver's side. Now when it comes time to remove this, we don't have to take anything else off the assembly. We're going to be dealing with just the lens itself. It just snaps in. Now you can only unsnap it on one side without damaging it. Now this one's off the vehicle. If it was on the vehicle, you'd be looking straight up from the bottom. Now this is the side closest to the door. This is the side closest to the mirror. What we need to do is grab something like a pocket screwdriver. Now with that pocket screwdriver, what we're going to do is we're going to insert between the lens and the housing and we're going to do it right here in this location. If you look right here, you can see how there's a darkened ring that stops and picks up and continues around. It's that gap right there that we're going to insert that pocket screwdriver in. Let's get in there, pry it off. Now it still has two wires attached to it so it's not going to fall off. There's a smaller terminal wire and a larger terminal wire so you make sure you plug them in correctly. That way it works properly. All you got to do is grab the terminal itself and work it off. Now if you have problems, you might even use your pocket screwdriver to get up under the edge to pry it up. But whatever you do, do not pull on the wiring. There's a chance you could pull it loose from the connector and then you've got to repair. Now all we got to do is grab our replacement. And if you look real close, you'll see once again there's a smaller terminal and a larger terminal. That also corresponds to the two terminals here, larger and smaller. We're going to plug them into the appropriate terminal to the appropriate connector. Ensure that they're fully seated. Once they're seated, you're going to go ahead and line everything up. Make sure that the wiring's up under there. You're going to line these two square cutouts. Once they're where they need to be, you're going to press down until it snaps. And there you have it. Now that's the installation of your pedal light. Now when it comes to diagnosing the puddle light issue, we can actually check to see if we've got 12 volts and ground when we've got the lights turned on. If the, for example, this is the driver's side, if the passenger side is working currently, we go over here, we make sure we've got 12 volts and a ground. If so, we know we've got the circuit being good, that more than likely the problem is with the puddle light assembly. Now the puddle light assembly can be tested off the vehicle, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Now one tool that I highly recommend every technician having is a power probe. Now for power probe you have the ability to test for both 12 volts and grounds on any circuit and also you have the ability to apply 12 volts and a ground using the toggle switch and the lead that's part of the tester. And that's what we're going to be using for testing these puddle lights. Now we're going to start with a known good puddle light assembly so you can see how it works and then we're going to move over to the one that came off the vehicle to see if it's actually bad. Now on the back side I made mention earlier about the two different terminal sizes. We've got a small and a large. Now the larger terminal is going to be our ground. So if we grab the ground from our power probe, hook it up to the larger terminal, and then we come over here and apply 12 volts to the smaller terminal, our light should work. And there you have it. We got a working LED. Of course we knew that was going to happen because this is a known good one. This is brand new. So we do the same thing with this older one. We've got the larger terminal, smaller terminal. Apply our ground over here to the positive terminal, apply 12 volts, and nothing happens. So we know we got a defective puddle light assembly. 
Now let's say you don't have all those fancy tools such as a power probe or a multimeter or a test light for checking this circuit or for testing that puddle light. Now you still have an option you can try. And it's a real simple step. We had this driver's side have an issue, right? What we do is we go over to the passenger side and it was so easy to unsnap this assembly and unplug it. Well, that's what we do. We'd go ahead and grab the passenger side, unsnap it, unplug it, bring it over here and plug it in and turn on the lights to see if it works. If it does, then we know it was the puddle light assembly. If it doesn't, then we know we got a probably a wiring issue or something else going on that has to be diagnosed further. But nonetheless, you have options when it comes to testing. Now, when it comes time to buying your replacement LED light assembly, you can go to your local Dodge dealer if you want, and it's gonna be around $40 just for one. But if you go on Amazon or eBay, you'll probably find that they've got the OEM listed parts on there, and they're offering them as a pair. So that way, if the left and right side don't match and you wanna replace them in a set of two, there you have it. And the price is around $40 as well, so you're gonna come out basically the same as if you went to the dealer and only bought one. Now, if you liked the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And you can also find me on all the other popular social networks, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you got any comments, suggestions, or anything that's related to the video we just did, or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you can always email me at david at MotorCityMechanic.com, and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. If this is the first time you've ever seen one of my videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. And also, if you're a returning subscriber, you may not know it, but there's a bell icon that YouTube added to the subscribe button. And if you click on that bell, it'll notify you instantly when videos such as this get uploaded. Now, if you'd like to shop on Amazon, please feel free to use the link that's in the description below this video. Anything that you buy on Amazon will help support this channel. Once again, everybody, thank you for your support and also for checking out all these videos.